Oh, conspiracy theories and conspiracy theorists. And, um, you know, they're nuts. They're out to lunch. They're crazy. Um, but yet they persist. And I think with the advent of the Internet, uh, there's more and more of these conspiracy theories and theorists popping up and putting forth their spin and their take on various things. Uh, some have been around for a long time, and some date back farther than you could Im possibly imagine. Uh, joining us right now is the author of a great new book, Jesse Walker, who happens to be the books editor at Reason Magazine. And uh, he is the uh, author of a, uh, a great new book, and it addresses everything that I've just uh, tried to address uh, very uh, shortly here. It's called The United States of Paranoia, and I, I hold it up for our Newsmax TV audience to take a look at. Um, hey, Jesse, how are you, sir? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm all right. I appreciate you coming on. Um, I, 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 let's, let's talk. First of all, how far back can you trace, uh, like, maybe the first known conspiracy theory um, that 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 became prominent in the, in the United States. Oh, well, there there have been uh, well it, even before there was a United States. I mean, the English colonists came here and, and immediately had conspiracy theories about uh, the Indians and about each other. Um, and I assume that even before then, the Native Americans probably had conspiracy theories about each other. Um, but I mean, just the uh, I, I write about in the 17th century all sorts of conspiracy theories. Um, involving Indians, um, often Indians supposedly co collaborating with uh, Catholics or Quakers or uh, the French colonists. Um, and some of this was just on the level of stuff that could be plausible. They're worried about uh, a possible attack. Maybe one tribe is allied with another. Some of it gets um, a lot sort of bigger and stranger. I, I mean, the, the most large and, and bizarre theory, which a number of prominent Puritans believed um, in New England, was that the uh, you know Satan had come to America and, and settled it with uh, pagans from uh, who didn't like the spread of the uh, gospel in Europe and that those were the Indians and of course this could be used as justification for killing people you didn't like um, but even beyond that I mean the, you know King Philip's War King William's War all sorts of wars that were fought uh, in the early uh, colonial days um, had you know fears of conspiracies at their core. All right, but now let's let's take it a little uh, closer to uh, to modern day, sure. uh, and 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 in general, uh, I mean it's it, it is possible. I mean some of these things that uh, people have conspiracy theories about, so called, uh, for instance, the JFK assassination. I mean there's been an official stamp put on the JFK assassination, but yet there are questions that remain. When people raise legitimate questions or, or questions that seem to make sense, but there's been a quote unquote uh, official investigation that has stamped it case closed, and I guess I'm talking specifically about uh, the JFK assassination. Do you call that a conspiracy theory? I mean, you do in the book, I guess, but isn't that, uh, and maybe there are more examples, uh, of something that is, is uh, a legitimate question? I mean, well, what's, I, the, I mean, what's, I, the, I what's the razor's edge here? What's the fine line between uh, a conspiracy theory and something that has been officially cleared up, but you know, there are uh, you know, big, looming questions? Sometimes conspiracy theories are true. I mean, I say at the beginning of the book, I'm not writing this either to espouse or to debunk um, any particular conspiracy theories. Now, some that I write about, I, I say, you know, this is nonsense. But I also there's some where I say this is true. I mean, Chapter 7 of the book is, uh, really focuses on stuff that came out in the 1970s, for example, with a lot of the post-Watergate investigations, which not only revealed a lot of um, uh, government misbehavior, but also then sort of lowered the bar for people imagining further government uh, misbehavior in conspiracy theories that sometimes had some credibility and sometimes didn't. So I'm not using the phrase conspiracy theory as a way of um, dismissing people. Uh, I think some conspiracy theories are true, some aren't, some are a mix of truth and, and falsity. Um, uh, the point that I, I, the two main points I'm trying to make are that, first of all, not only has this been around since the beginning, but it's been true across the political spectrum, including the center. I mean, the establishment has its own uh, conspiracy theories. It's not just a feature of the fringe. And also that even when a the conspiracy theory says absolutely nothing true about the object of the theory, it says something true about the anxieties and the experiences of the people who embrace it. If, if uh, theory catches on, then that's folklore, and that's worth paying attention to, because, you know, if, if someone believes that, um, you know, pick it out of your hat, which uh, villain um, uh, killed John F. Kennedy or, you know, Malcolm X or whoever, uh, then that's, uh, that says something about, you know, those, you know, 
the way those two folks see the world, and that says something about the way they're uh, living at that time. Hey, we are talking to Jesse Walker. He's the author of The United States of Paranoia, A Conspiracy Theory. Let me ask you about the title also before we get back into more of this. Um, United States of Paranoia, if you don't know what it's about, makes it sound like you know a knock on the United States. I know you're not doing that. Yeah. You have to put it into context, I guess. But um, is believing in a conspiracy theory necessarily paranoia? Well, again, I say at the beginning of the book, I'm using the word paranoia colloquially, not clinically. Um, I say everybody is capable of conspiracy, I mean, of uh, paranoid thinking, including you, me, and the founding fathers. Uh, I mean, it, it's, uh, I, I, in fact, I very much uh, speak out against people who use, like, phrases like, you know, sort of clinical terms to dismiss folks that they disagree with politically. I mean, I, and specifically, I look at the early 60s, a lot of the way that uh, folks like Richard Hofstetter wrote about conservatives at that time, the, the way that, uh, you know, Fax Magazine, you know, declared that had a psychiatrist declaring that uh, Barry Goldwater had, quote, unquote, a paranoid personality. I'm, I'm using, you know, the, the title, United States of Paranoia, that's a pun. Um, it's fun, supposed to draw people in, but um, it's, I'm not talking about any kind of psychiatric uh, diagnosis or anything like that. What about the 9-11 uh, the, the uh, so-called uh, truthers? Yeah. Uh, do, the, do, do conspiracies that have taken hold um, since, you know, since the uh, Internet has become available, have, uh, have, they, you know, have they lasted longer, grown bigger than they would have uh, you know, uh, if there was no Internet, like, like the older conspiracies? Uh, do you think that, that some of them, like that one, maybe have taken off? Uh, in particular, because of uh, it, it, it keeps being you know propagated over and over again on the on the internet. Well, I mean, there have certainly long-lived conspiracy theories before there was an internet. The two things that the internet really did um, is, first of all, they can things can spread a lot faster now, um, and just with conspiracy theories as with anything else. And the other is that there's been a lot more mixing. I mean, there's always been some, but especially since the 90s when the net started to take off, you could have on the same forum you know, hippies, militiamen, black nationalists, all trading conspiracy theories and, and drawing on each other's stories. And you come up with, you know, some interesting combinations that way. Um, and, but uh, it, it's not so much that we're getting more because of the Internet. It's just uh, faster and more of a stew. All right. Uh, let me ask you about um, the, the United States government has been, uh, you know, pumping drugs into uh, black minority uh, neighborhoods, the CIA has done it, I guess, is what the claim is or the conspiracy theory would be. Um, how prominent is that one? Uh, like in general, in the book, or? Well, I mean, how, how, how prominent have you found uh, through your research? That, that, well, I that mean, yeah, I mean, that's something that, would, it, that comes up. At, um, I mean, the two sort of bursts of, um, of discussion of that, I know in the 1960s, um, early 70s, there was you know, some talk about that, and there was some genuine scandals about you know, some CIA people being involved with um, the uh, drug trade in Southeast Asia, which, you know, then sort of fueled the further speculation. And then the, there was the, um, in the 1990s, and I don't get into this in the book, but there was, uh, you know, the, the stories um, in, I think it was the San Jose paper, about um, alleging, you know, a CIA cocaine connection with the Nicaraguan Contras. And, and, and again, in this case, I mean, there are worse documented cases of people turning a blind eye in the intelligence community, turning a blind eye to drug dealing by folks who, you know, they were collaborating with in other ways. Um, this sometimes got translated into the idea of the government deliberately injecting, you know, crack into communities, which is, you know, a somewhat larger story um, and, and more frightening one. But you can see how that sort of thing uh, could catch on with um, communities trying to explain what's going on with crack. Um, and, and, you know, the, uh, the effects of the drug end of the drug war. What about space aliens? What about, uh, you know, the government knows, the government's hiding it? Which I, you know, I don't doubt because I have trouble believing that we're the only ones that, you know, every day we're finding out there's a whole other, there are other universes out there with planets as big or bigger than ours. So I'm just, I, you know, I'm not 100% sure we're the only ones out there but um that aside my personal beliefs aside what about the uh you know that um, that we're not alone and there are space creatures and the government knows it and and they're hiding all this information yeah well you, there's like a sort of a step from one i mean we're not alone it's easy to believe we're not alone and space aliens have actually found their way here is a bigger story than that the u.s government knows about it is and, and isn't telling people is an even bigger story uh or, or a, a bigger you know bite, a bite to chew on um 
I talk about um, beliefs about aliens and UFOs in a number of different contexts, including I have a chapter on the idea of the benevolent conspiracy, a sort of like a secret force um, plotting to make people's lives better. And there's people who feel that way about aliens. Um, it, it, it's actually they sort of it's, they sort of secularize the idea of angels and, and put aliens in their place. Um, so I discuss it in that context, too, because sometimes, you know, there's the people who want the UFOs to come here, as well as the people who are afraid of an alien invasion. Our, our, and, we're, and we're talking once again with Jesse Walker, the author of The United States of Paranoia, A Conspiracy Theory. Um, are, are, are Americans um, more likely to, to believe these things, or is this a worldwide, you know, phenomena? It's, it's a worldwide phenomenon. I mean, I wrote about it um, in the United States because... I mean, I'm an American. I, I, I'm interested in American history. I think that looking at the history of what Americans have been afraid of is just a really interesting way to look at American history. But like I say at the beginning, I'm, I'm not claiming that we're more scared or prone to uh, conspiracy thinking than any other country. I mean, for all I know, you know, the French or, you know, who knows what they're afraid of. You know, I, I mean, there's certainly the Middle East, uh, Africa, Russia, Latin America. Every place has its own um, set of conspiracy theories. They have their own distinctive stamp. I'm looking at, you know, in America, what, what kind of conspiracy theories has our culture produced? What, does it, what do they say about us as a people? Um, and that does not in any way mean that uh, we're more scared than anyone else. It just means we're differently scared. One, one brief question uh, as we finish up here, uh, Jason. If you had to pick, and we got a book here that's about 400 pages all in all, um, if you had to pick the most outlandish, ridiculous, in your view, conspiracy theory that you came across in your research, what would it be? Uh, that would be uh, the idea that manholes are there to capture people for medical experiments. <laughs> Well, I thought they were there. You, know, you remember the Superman episode when there's a whole colony of little men down there in the manholes, and they were, you know, they're invading. They're going to invade us. But that's a good one. They captured. Maybe it. he got the idea from that. Yeah. Uh, now, do they suck the people down the manhole, or they open the manhole and grab people? You know, the the guy was kind of vague about it. But I, I I just I love that concept. I, I almost wish that one were. Too. That's a great one. All right, listen, and, and the book is chock full of uh, those kind and 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 the more serious and well known uh, as well. Jesse Walker, thank you for your time, sir. Well, glad to be here. Thank B you. Bye-bye. The United States of uh, Paranoia, a Conspiracy Theory um, by uh, Jesse Walker. It's interesting. I, when I saw this book, I said, yeah, we got to get them because there are so many. And it's, it's so, you know, some of them are crazy. And some of them, I think, are dead wrong and politically motivated. And he talks about in the book how the media uh, and, and, and uh, politicians uh, either collaborate or on their own. They, uh, they, they uh, well, yeah, mostly coalesce. Uh, to, um, uh, you know, to, to advance their own agendas uh, and through putting forth theories that you might call conspiracy theories or certainly, but uh, very, very interesting stuff, very interesting.